Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out the M1, M1 Mac Mini development review. And I'm just gonna jump straight into this one. Right now, I have Unreal Engine 4 being built on the M1 Mac Mini and also on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. We're doing a little comparison right here. And it takes around two hours to build Unreal Engine on the MacBook 16 inch. And it takes two whole days currently to build it on the M1. And that's not the, the least of the issues. I'm just giving you real world perspective of the situation. I've got the eight gigabyte model. And if you have multiple applications running, for example, I have switching screens right now. Look how slow that is. I have Epic Games Launcher on the screen. Um, switching over, I have Activity Monitor. Look how slow that is. Switching, switching. Once it's buffered it into memory, it's all right. Switching, switching. I have Chrome, I have loads of Chrome tabs. Let's try switching a tab. Wait, 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 wait. It's got the spinning wheel of, of whatever them. It hasn't switched yet. It's taken a very long time, and that's because I have the eight gigabyte model of the M1. I'm hoping that the 16 gigabyte model would run slightly better. You can look into Activity Monitor when it launches up. That over here, I have around three and a half gigabytes of compressed RAM being used. One gigabytes of wired RAM being used and two and a half being used for app memory. However, in total, it's around seven gigabytes being used. So what's happening is every single time I'm switching screens, it has to uncompress the RAM from the compressed area back into live memory. And then you can see it running and it runs fluid once it's, uh, okay, it runs fluid once it's been uncompressed and used over switching up the Xcode. Once I get Xcode on the screen, it's uncompressing the RAM, trying to get into live state memory. And then once it's there, it's usable. So yeah, hopefully 16 gigabytes will run better, but let me show you how it performs on the 16 inch. Now 16 inch over here has 32 gigabytes RAM. I'm just gonna switch controls. And as you can see, it's a lot more fluid. Even switching tabs, it's a lot faster, as you can see right there. And that's because I have 32 gigabytes RAM and that gives it the freedom to keep the application's memory live and uncompressed and usable. So the first thing I say is, if you are a heavy duty kind of user and uh, you have lots of applications running at the same time, then yeah, get more RAM because this is a live use case and why you need more RAM. That being said, I'm gonna give you the controls as to why maybe you won't need the more extra RAM. For example, if I were to stop this build right now, I'm gonna hit the stop button. Oh my God, that's really bad. Set me back a day and a half now. I'm gonna have to do the compile. So it's not compiling anymore. Let's see if it runs any more fluid. As you can see, it is Boom, shakalaka, usable again. So why is this insane use case slowing down the Mac so much? And I'll tell you why. I'm just gonna continue building again, and I'm gonna show you that in the build script of Unreal Engine, right there, we're using Mono, Mono to run Unreal Build Tool.exe. So we're using Mono to run a Windows <laughs> application, and it's all being virtualized in Rosetta. It's not native on the ARM64 Mac. I'm actually compiling this right now, trying to make it trying to make a, a native version of Unreal Engine run on ARM64. If you look in the source code, macplatform.h, they have support. They have support for M1 Macs. As you can see, you got Mac underscore ARM64. So I'm gonna see if I can get that working. Of course, it takes two days every single time I change a header file. So I'll let you know if I do. If I do, I'll post a video. If I don't, we'll just wait a couple of weeks and hopefully Unreal Epic will release it. But the reason why it's running so slow is that conversion process it uses as many calls as possible, as much RAM as possible to get the compilation running. And that running is being virtualized. Rosetta 2, Mono, heavy, heavy duty stuff. So for this insane use case, yes, you will need more RAM. But like I said, when I stop it, look how fluid it is. Look, I've got Unreal Engine, the Epic Games launcher, very, very smooth. I've got Chrome and it runs very, very smooth, and this is with eight gigabytes RAM. So I just wanted to stress that point because I've been trying to find a use case why eight gigabytes RAM is no good, and the use case is trying to build Unreal Engine 4. So if you're trying to use some heavy duty compilation while having Chrome and games in the background, make sure you upgrade because you can't manually update these RAMs. So you can see right there on the 16 inch, it's flying through the build. Let's see how fast it takes to compile one more file. Boom, just compiled another file. Boom, another file is just compiled. Whereas on the M1, yeah, nothing is moving. It is, it's gonna take forever. It's been on that file 
for a long, long time. So other than that, it ran pretty much exactly the same as the MacBook Pro that I reviewed earlier on, MacBook Pro versus 16 inch, check out that review. And that's pretty much how the Mac Mini runs as well. So I need to go back and think, do I wanna do professional development on this Mac Mini computer, like super professional development, unwinding kind of stupidity? I probably don't, but I do want a machine that I can throw lots of apps on it, and I could throw lots of apps on it on the eight gigabyte edition. However, I don't know if in about a year's time, eight gigabytes will be enough for me. So I'm in this decision-making mode where if I should return this one and upgrade to the 16 gigabyte model, or should I just use this one for the next year, figure it out, and then by then they'll probably have a Mac Mini Pro with an M2, and that will just outperform this by 10X. So why did I spend 50% more when I could have just used that 50% to just buy a brand new system? So I'm just in this decision-making mode where I need to know if I should get the eight gigabyte model, keep this one, or the 16 gigabyte model. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys are thinking out there. I'm leaning towards just keeping this unit because instead of spending the ridiculous prices for RAM upgrades and SSD upgrades, I can just save that and just get a new system in six months or a year's time when they have the proper Pro M2 sort of situation machines and I probably want one of those. Or do I just know that I'm gonna be frustrated with eight gigabytes and just pay extra money now to avoid the frustrations. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hope you found this real life kind of like experience of developing on the M1 Mac Mini. Again, it runs pretty much exactly the same as the MacBook Pro. One thing I love about this guy, it's been silent. I've been using it, silent, quiet, all this kind of stuff. One thing I hate about it is the one gigabit ethernet. I wish they had a 10 GBE model. I wish, 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 wish they had that because that would just make me keep it. But for now, I'm, oh, and if they had user upgradable RAM, boy, hey, that would have been good. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.